Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk and this is the last episode of this series. So this is where we're going to actually publish the website. I've got a UAT address that I'm going to put it onto so that uh, my friend Megan and Gavin, they can test out the site and uh, start editing the content and having a look before it actually goes on to the live site. So the publishing process for going onto the test site is the same as it would be for going onto the live one. Apart from there are some different config settings. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to uh, show you how we can create some config transforms. So I'll do one for UAT. Uh, we're going to publish a website in Visual Studio. We're going to log into the server, the remote server, where I host my site. We're going to put the files into a folder on the server, create the website in IIS, and add the bindings. We're going to point the website to the folder that we created, and back up the dev version of the database and restore it on the server. And we're going to visit the web address and then fix any bugs along the way. So let's get started then and going into Visual Studio to add the config transforms. So to do this, we need to make sure that we have some, in Configuration Manager, we have some uh, configuration set up. So I like to have one called UAT. And another one called Live. And if we go into this, I'm just going to edit up here to remove release. And I'm going to edit here and remove release as well. So now we just have debug, UAT and live. Save that. I'm going to um, right click on web.config and then click on add config transform. And what that will do is that will give me three files. You might not be able to see that with my face in the way. But basically, it gives you the three files you need underneath. So I can delete uh, web.debug.config. So I'll just we'll have, and I can delete web.release.config. So I'll just need web.live.config and web.uat.config. So I've prepared a config transform earlier. So I'm going to get that, copy that, and paste it in. So this is what my transform looks like. So I've got the SMTP settings for sending in, uh, emails. So that's going to use the local host. I've got my um, database connection string. So this isn't the real connection string. And then I've got the another one here just to say that don't index it. Uh, so if any search engines come across the test address, they won't index it. But just make sure that when you do your live config, you don't have this one on there. So now I've um, created my uh, connection string. I'm going to publish the website. So I'm going to right click on the web project and click on publish. I want to choose folder profile. And then I want to choose where that folder goes to. So I'm going to inside ELL, inside trunk, I want to make a new folder. So I'll click on this icon to create a new folder, and this will just be called Deploy. And then click on Open. And then I'm just going to Publish. So I've created my folder profile. I've clicked on Publish. And what that's doing is running a build of the site, and then it's generating the outputted files and putting them into this folder here. So and one of the things I've noticed here is that it hasn't got delete existing files set to true. It knows that the configuration I want to use is UAT because that's the one that I was currently on. But what we can do for that is just go into settings for the delete option. Just go into settings, open file publish options, and then click on delete all existing files. And that way, in that folder where it outputs it to, it just make sure that they're all deleted first. So in the message here, as it was already doing the publish anyway, it's just going through and it's pushing all those files into that destination folder. And it will be these files that we use when we put that on the server. So what we need to do now is make sure that we have all our files included so we can publish. So we open this out and we go into like the CSS folder, include. So we need to make sure there are no files being missed. 
So I want to include all of the media. So a quick way to do that is exclude media and then re-include it. And it includes all of its children then. But for future deployments, I'll exclude media because I don't want media published every time, especially when it's live. I don't want it to overwrite what's in the media folder. Scripts especially, that can be missed off. And then views, just make sure all the views are included. So it looks like we've got everything included. So we can save that and then we want to do right click and publish. So now let's click on publish. And this will do a build using the UAT configuration settings. It will generate all the files and push them into the folder that we chose, which mine is going into in my trunk and then slash deploy. So here we go. If I've clicked on that link, control and click, we're in the folder now. So I can highlight all of these, click on add to archive, do ELL and then do, well, that, that I'll do the date 2017 and then date is the 16th. So now I've got my zip file ready to go. I just It's just adding all the uh, files into the zip. And this is what we're going to actually put onto the server. So whilst that does that, let's go onto the server. So I've created myself a folder in the W root called ELL and then UAT. So at the moment, I just have a basic coming soon page. Um, I made sure that on the folder, I've got security permissions set so that um, that's for I users and the IIS user so that they've got modify permissions. So now the zip file is copied over. I need to extract all of that into the folder. And because it gave the folder the name with the date already, um, that works out well when you extract all of the files. So that's going to extract them out to that folder. And it's this folder now which I want to point my uh, IIS site to. So I'll click on that. And then just point to that dated folder and click on OK. Also in IIS, what I need to make sure I do is edit the bindings. When I created the site in IIS, I had to specify what the binding is. So that's the URL that people will be visiting. So if you go into edit here, you can see this is the URL. So now I need to create a backup of the developer version of the database for this website. So I've right clicked on the database in SQL Server Management Studio and I click on backup. And then from here, what I need to do is choose disk, click on add, put the destination of where I want this to go. So that would be in the backup folder and then I'll just do ELL and then the date. And then click on OK. I think the options, backup options, full backup, yeah. So that by default, it should be correct. Click on OK. And that's completed successfully. Now what we need to do is take that backup file and put it onto the server to restore it in SQL Server on the server. So now I've copied the back file that I zipped up onto my server. So I'm going to extract that now. When I create this database, I need to make sure that it uses the same uh, version of SQL for the database. And I like to just call it .uat sometimes. Click on OK. I need to create a user for this database as well, so they can have access to the database. And when I do that, I need to use the same username and password that I created in the web config transform. So I'll right click on security, go to new login, SQL server, server authentication, and I'm just going to call it ELL on this one. I'm going to add the password from the config transform. I'm untick password policy, don't need that ticked. And then in user mapping, I'm going to assign reader, writer, and owner for the ELL database. So now I've created my database, I need to restore it using the backup file that I added. 
So I've clicked on the right clicked on the database, clicked on re, uh, tasks and then restore. Now I need to point it to the file that I brought over, the back file. So I've selected the back file that I added and then I choose the, the database that it's coming from within that back file and the database that this is going to overwrite. In the files tab I just need to make sure that it's pointing to the correct files here which I can see it is. Then on options I click on overwrite and then click on OK. So that's restored the database successfully. So now that I've restored the database I need to go into the security for that database and delete the user ELL because that's not a valid user on this machine that's using the credentials from the previous machine and it doesn't work when you do a backup and then restore on a different server. So I've deleted that one from there and I'm now going into the logins that I already created a, an ELL one using the password from my config transform and I just need to make sure that the user mapping is set so it can point to this database that I've just uh, restored and the options are reader, writer and owner. So that should be all with the database. Uh, the only reason we'll have to come back to this is if the connection string was wrong. So what we want to do now is make sure that we can actually visit the site. So we'll try the Umbrico URL first. So we've got an error on the site after trying the Umbrico address. So to see what the error is, I just need to go into the folder and edit the config file and turn custom errors off. So now I've turned custom errors off and saved the config file, I'll refresh the page and see what the error actually is. Right, so it's got permission errors. So what I just need to do is make sure that the permissions that are set for the IIS, sorry, IIS users and IUser um, for modify permissions, make sure that they cascade down. Now I'm going to try it again on the front end. So we've got to the login page, which is a good sign. So now I'm going to log in and see, see if the connection is working. So I've managed to log into Umbrico. And uh, that means that the database connection is working. I've got access to the back end of the site. Let me just click on home, click on properties, click on the URL, and let's see if it loads OK on the front end. Yeah, so the website's loaded on the front end. It's brought across the media and everything. So I assume that if I just edit some content on here, if I just say testing, Paul, save and publish, and then refresh the home page. We should see that gets updated. So this is running on the UAT address and it's worked. So that's it then. So we've successfully deployed the website to the test environment. Um, so this is the end of the course. Um, so we've managed to take it from installing Umbrico to creating all of the dynamic properties that we want, rendering those values onto the um, template that we were using the reflex template from Pixelarity. And we've actually made an editable site now. So using the reflex template from Pixelarity, if you go to codeshare.co.uk slash reflex, that's how you get hold of the template. We've got a working contact form. We've got everything all set up and ready to go now. So Megan and Gavin can have a play with the site, start editing the content and um, take it from there really. So I hope you've liked the video and especially hope you've enjoyed the series as well. Um, I assume if I was to do another series I might do other things differently that I've learned along the way since starting the series but it's always good to try and share what I've done what I've learned so far. 
So if you have any issues with any any of the videos, please feel free to comment in the in the video. Either myself, I should be able to answer it, or some of the other people that are watching the videos might be able to respond to you as well and help you out. So thanks for watching. Please click on like, subscribe to my channel, and share with others. Thanks a lot. Bye.